Uh, I'm calling me in order for everybody to stand. We're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. After that, I'm going to ask to call me Garner to lead us in the prayer. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most heavenly and gracious Father, I want to thank you for allowing us all to be here tonight. Father, I ask that you allow us to have this meeting in your way and allow us to make the sound decisions for the betterment of our city. In our son in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Welcome everybody here. Uh, we're going to start with the uh, roll call. Hmm. Yeah, Sean will. Thank you. Alderman Betts? Here. Alderman Dore? Present. Alderman Gardner? Here. Alderman McCoy, noted Alderman <coughs> McCoy is absent. Alderman Probst, yeah. Mr. Mayor, we have a quorum. Okay, we are pleased to open this. Before we get started, I was supposed to read this last time, but this is a thank you to Tracy Dean with the Woodman of the World. <coughs> they donated a new and larger American flag for City Hall, and that's the one you see flying out there. So I want to thank them for doing that. That was awful, awful nice of them to do that. Also, when we had our uh, our fishing uh, event out out at the uh, city pond, they also brought a, a trailer that there is their disaster trailer and they brought water and stuff. It was really really nice of them. I really thank them for doing that and reaching out for us. Okay, in front of you have the minutes from the previous meeting. If you've had a chance to see those, if you can, if I can have a motion to approve those minutes. Motion by Alderman Betts. I hear a second. Second, second by Alderman Probst. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to ask our auditor, uh, Ms. Deborah Moat, to give us a financial report. Okay. This month I've provided your balance sheet um, as of August the 31st, 2017, which gives you the, um, the total of all the assets, the liabilities, and the fund balances for each of the funds. I thought this was an, a good report to a financial statement to provide since it shows where we are at this point in time on August the 31st. And then I also have in your packet a statement of revenues and expenditures and changes in fund balances for the two months ending August the 31st, which has the actual numbers uh, there and a combined total on, for each of the funds. It does show a net. Um, loss after the expenditures um, uh, reduces the after sh the revenues less the expenditures of a 1.7 million. This is because the hydro royalties for the first quarter of this new fiscal year has not been accrued. Um, I didn't know at the time how much it would be. Now I do know that it should be 2.5 million when we get it in November, and that would be for um, July, August, and September. And the next report that I've provided is a budget to actual summary by fund time for the two months, which shows the actual to budget comparison and a, uh, the variance, whether favorable or unfavorable. It's a condensed form, um, so I thought that was a good report to provide since it does kind of, you're not looking at all the detail. And, um, at the last page of that report shows the total actual to total budgeted amounts which are, like I said earlier, I think our total revenues are 3.2 million, our expenditures are 5 million for a net uh, change in position of 1.75, <coughs> a negative 1.75. And then the last part of the, the packet that I gave you was the detail behind all the numbers, which this report was provided to the uh, department heads for their review and so that they can also see where they're at, but it's in a much more detailed <coughs> format. Um, there has not been no change in operations at the present time to require a change in the budget or amend the budget, so everything still we're going <coughs> as planned in our budget. Um, we are currently working on, or I am, the uh, written policies and procedures manual for the town for um, all the functions of the accounting throughout the entire town, but it's something required for the, by the legislative auditors. 
Uh, Silas Simmons was supposed to have come last month about this time, but they didn't come, but they're supposed to start Monday with their funeral. <coughs> And as time goes by, I plan to continue to work on improving these financial statements so that you can make good decisions and have the information that you need to make those. That's it. Uh, just a few comments on, on there. If you heard her say that the expenditure growth of revenues, normally she will approve our hydro royalty by a month, and that would have been in a favorable position where it would have shown you know, income rather than a loss because we haven't actually received a check we received that royalty payment on November 1, and that completely flip flopped it. But she went ahead and didn't have those figures when she did the, the, the statements, and she wanted to go ahead and get them out. But they are in a positive posture, so just want to make sure you know that. Also, the Silas Simmons, I did visit with West Gore, and he said that they are running a little bit behind getting here. I'm gonna say, I want to make sure he felt like that he could get our report out on time. He said he doesn't see a problem with that. In fact, he sees them wrapping up by 1st of December with that. He said, because last time I spent Christmas <laughs> uh, up here trying to work on this report to get that out in a timely manner. So he said he didn't want to go through that again. But just from the information he's seen and heard, he's really encouraged about the work that we've done on that. So uh, any other comment? Uh, any other have a comment or question for Ms. Mo? Okay, thank you, Deborah. All right, moving on to number two, occupational license. The first one is uh, Gary Caldwell, who's a lifelong resident uh, of the day. He uh, looks like he's going to have an LLC, and he's a professional land surveyor and asking for an uh, occupational license. Uh, no sign application is submitted. Of course, you know, he, being a surveyor, he works out of his home. Uh, any questions? Is Gary here? Let's see. Any questions from the alderman? I hear a motion to grant this occupational license. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Alderman Dore. Then I hear a second. Second. Take by Alderman Post. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Second one is perfusion vascular lab of the day. That's Ryan Regas. Regas. Is he here today? Okay. That's the direct administration. That is the, uh, as you know, that's our, the, uh, the hospital there. And it's in that, that unit there where the uh, Tillman group is now. So. It's, uh, it's following the wound care. The wound care? They're doing the same thing. Just the okay. So he's asked for an occupation license. Do I hear a motion we accept this? I'll make that motion. Motion made by Alan Dory. Second by Alan Gardner. Alan Faber. Aye. Okay. Then we have an outdoor sign application. By Lori's Tamale, you know, if y'all know last time she was didn't have a sign ready. And you have a copy of it there. Is there any questions? Application seems to be uh, incomplete. <coughs> when it talks about type of construction to be used and height from ground to bottom of sign, um, while it was approved by Mr. Allred and I'm assuming that's uh, Kathy's and Miss Kathy's initials down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Do we know what the sign is going to be made of? Does it does it meet the standards? I think she already has it. What I passed out already said. This is out. Oh, this same image is already out there. I didn't actually uh, go over to look at it, but I see it. Yeah. It's home on the building. It's home on the building. I thought it was in the It's in the grass. It's like on the grass. It's like on the little uh, L-shaped deal. Man. It looks fine to me. Any other questions? I mean, do you want before approving this? Do you want to get the rest of the information on it? We can certainly require it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming uh, Mr. Allred probably went out and looked at it since it's already out there. Mm -hmm. But it, I think it's constructed out of wood, to be honest with you, and painted. I mean, it's. I don't know who did the sign. I don't want to say it was done professionally, but I mean, it is up. I just noticed that there were blanks on the application but was approved. So I didn't know if they approved it by sight. I was just curious about that. Any other questions? I'll make a motion we approve. Second. Second by motion made by on on door ready. Second by on the garden on favor. Aye. Okay. All right. <clears throat> the next thing I am I'm, I'm actually this is a pat on the back to our our utility department, you know, uh, 
as many of you know, we own all of our own utilities. And I recently got back from New Orleans, and I promise you, I got there to, to, the, to the hotel, and you couldn't brush your teeth. You had to have water. You had to buy water to brush your teeth for two days. They did tell you it's okay to shower. But anyway, we are really blessed in the city to have a water department and the utility office that we've got. And I, this is a, this came from the state of Louisiana Department of Health, came by certified mail to us, and it's the class one sanitary survey for our public water system. It was, there were no violations whatsoever. As a matter of fact, it was really a, a really good report that we're, that I just wanted to read this and give notice and recognition to Mark and all of his people that work with him for doing a good job. Also, last night, many of you know that our power went out and we were attacked last night by two raccoons that got in our substation and knocked the power out. And within 30 minutes, our crews had our power back up all over town. And I think that them, as well as all of our departments, do a good job and a lot of times it goes overlooked, but this is, this, is, this is something we all take for granted. But to be able to drink our water and not have to worry about boiling it, to brush your teeth, that says a lot. And that's, that means a lot to the people. Thank y'all. Anyway. Okay, we have opening bids for our, we have some city vehicles that we are going to, <laughs> I have a list. I'm going to see. John, will you write these down next to which one? Is? <coughs> this is from William Bradford on Alabama <coughs> Avenue Ferry. He bid $300 for the 2002 Chevy Ventura van. $300. Three hundred. Okay. Three hundred. Okay. Okay. The next bid is given by Crystal Durham of Watkins Auto in Purvis, Mississippi. On the 2006 Ford F-350 van, they bid $77. <laughs> On the 1997 Ford F-250, they bid $77. <laughs> On the 1997 Ford F-250, bid number 065. And on the 1994 Chevrolet pickup, $137. Okay. <laughs> This is some uh, this is just expensive stuff. <laughs> okay, this bid is by Kevin Davis of Fairview, Louisiana, and it's for the 2002 Chevrolet Ventura van, and it's three hundred and twenty-five dollars. Get all these money this is a bid on the 1998 Ford F-250 from George Latham, and he bids $526 on the 1998 Ford F-250. $526. I'd like to ask him how they come up with that. How'd you get $526? Thought somebody was going to get 525. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a bid on the 1998 Ford F 250. And this is also coming from Kevin Davis and Faraday, $250. And this is the bid on the ninth. It was the uh, 1998 Ford F-250. This is on the 98 GMC Sierra pickup. 
from Christian Christina Latham, excuse me, Natchez, and she bid six hundred and seventy-six dollars and eighty cents. <laughs> GMC pickup and it's from Gary Whitley for $465. Now, that being all the bids, do we have bids on each piece? We do have bids on each item. Uh, of course, a couple of those items for $77. Do we want to accept these bids? I would recommend we do it. Uh, some of these really are worth probably about $77. <laughs> uh, we do not have any kind of insurance on them. We didn't have, we dropped a lot, of, uh, one of the things, a lot of the vehicles, we dropped the insurance on them that have been, been carried over liability year to year. We save thousands of dollars by just insuring and carrying liability on those vehicles that are actually running and being used. <coughs> I hear most we accept these bids. I make a motion to accept the bids. Motion made by all folks. That's my Alderman Gardner. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Number six is the, we introduced a revised city ordinance of 664 last month. And this is the uh, time when we have a public hearing on the blighted properties. Uh, there were some changes made to it, but I need to have a motion to go into public. Uh, public meeting for the for the discussion of this particular I'll make the motion. Motion made by Alderman Dory. Do there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Betts. We are now in public session. Public hearing for the uh, city ordinance on the blind properties. Any questions from the public? Basically what this did, we just changed some verbiage in it and this should complete it. And uh, Bill, you want to elaborate that we're ready to go after this completion of this? Shortly after. Okay. We've got to get our hearing officer to review our notice format to make sure we're covering everything properly, legally. And that should just take a few days and we'll be sending notices out. Be enough public comment. Do I hear a motion we close public? I think hearing on this. Motion made by Alderman Gardner. Second. Second. Alderman Probst, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Number seven, uh, last month we introduced the, the adoption of the ordinance for the municipal officer salaries. And this is the adoption uh, night. And we opened a public meeting on it as well. So, Mr. Mayor, what? you closed the public hearing, but I didn't hear anybody. Oh, I'm, I'm, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm yeah. Call the vote. So, do I hear a motion that we accept, adopt the ordinance as? I'll make that motion. I'll make that motion. Bill Ray, second, Bill Garner, all in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you, Councilor. Glad you're awake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, item number seven. Public hearing adoption of ordinance municipal officer salary. Uh, same thing, we're going to have to open the public hearing. Did I hear that motion? Motion by Arnold Gardner. Second. Second, Bill Ray, all in favor? Aye. Uh, and then the public hearing. Any comment from the public on? This will offer salaries. Buzz, can you read the ordinance uh, as you are proposing to revise it? Well, it's not a revised, uh, Ray. It's actually the, the basically it's just the ordinance to fix the compensation of the mayor, all the clerk, and the chief of police of the town of the day. Uh, and if it's to your pleasure, do you want to read? Yes, sir. Okay. Be it ordained by the mayor and board of Alderman of the town of the day in regular session, duly convened as a government authority of said municipality that once. Section 1. This proposed ordinance was previously introduced at a regular meeting of September 12, 2017. And Section 2. After due notice of advertising of this proposed ordinance from the official journal on the 27th of September 2017, and public hearing held at the mayor and board's regular meeting on the 10th day of October 2017. It is hereby ordained and adopted as an ordinance of the town of the day of Louisiana that, whereas LSA RS 33404.1 provides that the Board of Aldermen shall, by ordinance, fix the compensation of the mayor, alderman, clerk, and chief of police. 
Therefore, be it ordained by the Mayor and Board of Alderman of the Town of Bidet, Louisiana, that the term of the office commencing July 1st, 2016, the compensation of the aforementioned municipal offers is fixed as follows. The compensation for the mayor is fixed at $82,940 per year. The compensation for alderman and the alderwoman is fixed at $8,424 per year. The compensation for the clerk is fixed at $75,478 per year. And the compensation for the chief of police is fixed at $72,410. The foregoing ordinance was read and considered section by section and as a whole and vote thereon was as follows. That's how it reads. That is the current salary, so from, from uh, adjustments from the past to now, right? Right, that's correct. That's, that's what they were when we took the office. Any other questions? Okay, I hear a motion to close the public here. Motion made by all in favor. Second by all in favor. Aye. I hear a motion to adopt the ordinance. I make the motion. That was kind of together, but I'll arm the order and pick, uh, make a motion, second by order, uh, Bess, all in favor? Aye. <coughs> right. Item number eight is a request for a variance on the sale of alcohol and beverages at the Riverfront event. And this, I assume, is the balloon race weekend uh, on the Riverfront. And uh, Janice Summerall is here from JoJo Drive Through, and she's asking for a variance so she can sell the alcohol and beverages at the riverfront for that particular event. So, any questions from the alderman? We know they going to pay us, but current, there's current in the ordinance that prohibits it on the last three months. She's asking for a variance. Well, right, that's correct. Right. Yeah, as y'all know, we had a, we granted a, you know, they had a concert here recently that was a benefit that was granted and they, you can suspend by vote, you know, I mean by vote, a uh, positive vote, that you can suspend that particular ordinance for us, you know, a request for that and it would strictly be restricted to the person that's asking for it or that would be it, so. So what type of alcohol? I, 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 do you want to speak to that, Janice? Do you, do you like to say, yeah. What are you planning on selling? Uh, well, we normally sell beer, any kind of daiquiris. Uh, if that's all y'all want us to sell, that's what we'll do. We do have available the mixed drinks. I have a catering license that allows me to do that. And we have, my grandson will be there to make sure that all IDs are checked because we don't want any problems. We don't allow it at our business and we don't want it especially there. Monitoring people who are drinking. I know that was one of the comments that I made to the person who was getting the last one that monitoring those people as they come back. Right, yeah. So Sam, does, which is John Cowan's wife, will be the one that's running the bar. And we don't, if they come through our drive through and they've had too much to drink, we refuse them because we have children that sat on that road, grandchildren, and we don't want any problems. So, you know, we just want people to have, be able to have a good time. But we don't want, we don't like a bunch of drunks either. Any <laughs> questions? What, what time does the, um, does the Riverfront event close? Not the well, it's basically the flea market, I think. Is, is that, is that the, where you plan on having it, Janice? Yes, sure. at the, at the, that's, what's my understanding that we could have a, May could have a booth. We was told at first that we could have a booth at the flea market, and then they told us we would need to come here and make sure it was okay because it, of the ordinance in the past. So we have like operational hours from and to on that particular weekend. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Well, I wouldn't want to do it on Sunday. I know they're going to be open on Sunday, but we don't want to do it on Sunday. We just want to do it uh, Friday night. And you know, a decent time Saturday to Saturday night. I've never gone to the flea markets. I guess I have, but I haven't been there. I think the flea market basically closed down. I don't have uh, around midnight. In previous years, when we done it, we shut down around ten o'clock. Okay. We shut our booth down about ten o'clock because after that, you're kind of asking for some trouble. 
I think maybe you get the pulse of the of the alderman, other alderman they want to, and also maybe some comment from you as far as how you feel about that. And, you know, that's what we're doing. Bill? It appears to me that y'all here to serve or be served, except for that, y'all already make $8,200 to $8,500 a year as elected official. We have non employee people making $166,000 on benefits. And Mr. O'Reilly has already made about $22,000 on extra benefits. $22,000. That's the insurance paid for. Very legal, but that's another burden. We have a road plan we have to pay for that was negotiated prior to y'all coming on. We had to build a parking lot. It's expensive. The convention center costs us. This is another add on to the expense of a day. And the people of the day need a break. We've, we've gone on and on about expenses and all that. And after a while, it's got to stop somewhere. You agreed to come to work for 82 to 8,400, I think is what you just said. And uh, if you have to come up here and inconvenience yourself, you need to quit the job. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Another question? Right. How much would you determine a dollar amount for compensation? What would y'all be asking for? Two dollars an hour, twenty an hour? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just waiting on company. I mean, that's. I don't know. I can, I can bring it up. Four hundred dollars an hour now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I don't know. How hard do that work all week? I mean, that. What's the uh, as far as I, I'm concerned, 100, between 100 and 150 dollars for any additional. That's roughly about the same thing that any other city in this local area will pay their alderman to come to special meetings. Mm -hmm. I did my research and then 150 per meeting or 150 total for the year. 150 per meeting. Y'all giving up your other salary no. to do this? <laughs> <laughs> giving up all your other benefits to do this? That's them. Yeah, I don't think they should have to give up their other uh, salary. And I don't think it's, it's nothing wrong with them getting paid extra if they have to come in for a meeting. I think if you were sitting up there, you would want the same pay. That's great. We, the voters, voted for them because everybody said they were going, cut, 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 cut. You got elected. And we are watching and we are listening. If you want to spend another term up there, you better be careful. But we, I will say this, this administration and board, we have cut, we have cut, seriously. Let's go uh, start adding back. And uh, we, uh, I just, I just want to say that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm far against whatever. I'm just saying that we have, if we promise that, we have cut a lot. And I'd be glad to show anybody on, on, on paper where we cut and it's been pretty substantial. How much did we get for insurance? Pardon? How much is insurance per person per year? It depends on whether they have family coverage. How much was Ms. Dora? Pardon? How Dora. much was it to cover Ms. Dora? And she didn't have experience. She was talking about cutting your uh, salary because you wasn't experienced until the last one. You're she mistaken. I, I would like to correct you. I did not say that at the last meeting. I never said that. That was, was talking about cuts. No, it was in the paper. That's exactly right, and it was redacted the next day because that was that is an incorrect statement. Um, just just to clarify, it was a statement thrown out. Right, but but again, it was not by me. And and Mr. McDonald, just so since you mentioned my name, I'd like to go ahead and say that I am not for this. I'm not for getting paid special. I knew what the salary was. I knew what the benefits were when I ran for office. I, I'm not for an increase in pay at all. So my name was mentioned because I have the health insurance, which was a benefit that was already in place when I decided to run. And when I put my name on that ticket, I knew what the pay scale was and what the benefits were, which was why I decided to run. I am not in any way asking for any additional compensation. So I wanted to go on record as stating that. Um, oh, yes. Since my name was mentioned, I want to make my intentions very clear. Okay, just to, okay. And I'd like to say, if you remember last meeting, I think we were trying to take a 10% deduction in our salary, is what I was told. Yes, sir. 
that's what you say. I know that's what I do. That ain't what I say. I know that's not what you I didn't want you to know where I stand on it, too. Let's, where let's, where those funds come from out of the budget that's already been well, be, be in the budget. I, mean, you'd have, but I, I, I think it's been brought up. I think what we can do is have discussions amongst. Uh, we can have office discussions with, uh, from, from what I'm hearing, the, uh, some of the aldermen say, and I haven't heard aldermen vets comment one way or another. <coughs> uh, we, I think we need to discuss this and bring it back. If, if, uh, one at a time, we come back if they feel like they want to do that. We'll they can present the ordinance, and then the next meeting have public hearing to adopt it or whatever. Then this be discussed then. But let's move on tonight. Y'all agree? But I would definitely uh, suggest that you all when going to don't quit your primary job for eight four hundred dollars a year job. Right. <laughs> I would suggest that. Okay. <laughs> All right, now we'll move on to number 11. This is something that uh, we're, we're going to be facing here, and I'm glad to see Cedric here tonight, or at least here in Orange Street <coughs> Sanitation. But we, we're having a situation come up. I don't know if many of you have seen it, but the uh, state of Louisiana is going to be releasing, I think, what, 15,000 uh, 15, inmates that are, are nonviolent, uh, the, uh, okay. the criminals that you know, have been working some of these work crews. Well, when they release them, the only thing that's going to be available are people who might not want on the streets. We're just, I'm throwing this out to start the discussion. This is going to happen in November, is that correct, Lee? Yes, yeah, November. And also, I, I asked Cedric to come tonight because there are some things with having inmates on the street that we don't ever hear these stories till I got Cedric in the room and, and heard some of these stories, and they're pretty frightening. Uh, as you know, that there's a lot of telephone calls, and think about this, how hard it is to police three or four men on the highway. If they can contact their family and say, hey, look, I'm going to be over on the highway by Sprint Mart. Go put something in the culvert for me there, and I'll, you know, you can't, that's something you can't catch. So imagine, use your imagination of the things that can float from these inmate crews back to where they're at. Another problem is, it's really costing the town a lot of money and time to send four or five vehicles to go pick them up, wait for them, get them, bring them back, and by the time they get started and back on their equipment and service and get them going, and, and those that do know how to run the equipment or those that don't train them, you're not getting very much production. And I'll be honest with you, I, I really think that we should investigate looking at combining these guys and also getting some permanent or part-time help to work on these, these, these units. Now, I think Alderman Dore asked me last year to get bids on having some commercial people cut grass. I think that's a good idea. We will be doing that as well. The first thing I want to do is I want to get with Lee and also all of our grass cutting people and identify those areas that are having to be cut. So if somebody come and give a bid, they can give a, a legitimate bid. And, and we're going to explore all those options. And I just, I'm putting that out there for discussion. Uh, so I just want the people to be aware of it because if you see in November that those prisoners were not getting as many or any, that's some of the things that we're facing. And I don't, I don't entertain any questions at all right now. I don't want to go public with this. I just have to call them as anything else they would like to consider. Well, I've talked to Cedric today for a while, and he told me he was going to share a few things that okay. he had experienced. Sure. I, would, I would love to. Out there. Would... But also one other thing I'd like okay. to say is, and I've talked to you about this before, I know I cut the grass. Zero turns cut a lot, but a, a, a tractor with a, a finishing mower and bush hog can cut a lot more in certain areas that they're cutting. So I, you know, we discussed about using bigger equipment with more cutting power. And again, that's something we need to look at investing in too. More, better equipment to <coughs> cut the cost. And Lee, your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I agree with you. The, you know, the bigger the back wing or the bigger the grooming mower on the back, you know, it's it's definitely a, a time saver. And there's a lot of areas that you can cut with that sure. zero turn. Yeah, our uh, our uh, riverfront alone, you know, that's that's like seventy five acres. Back of back row. Yeah. Highway. Yeah. There's a lot of. Places well, the, the highway is going to be a different issue because the state has a program where we get we actually get compensated for cutting the highway. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a little different issue there. 
I just want to bring that up. But Cedric said he wanted to share. If he yeah, was, Cedric, he, I, I, he I, can I, give I, his I, firsthand experience of what's taking place out with some of those people. Yeah. Well, tell, well, tell, tell them your typical day of people must. Well, 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 see, a lot of people, I've been doing it 10 years now. A lot of people ride by and see us with those fellows. Some of them fellows ain't never done nothing like that. Some of them fellows didn't come out of the house at night. And you get one, you got to train him. You may keep him a week or two weeks, then they transfer him. And then we got to watch him. We get fired, we got to watch him. Then they'll take, get somebody to go by at night, and drop dope or cell phones out and baby diaper. And ball that up, throw it on the ground, and they die. I'm telling you, I found two cell phones, they my grandkids, so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, but it's not easy like y'all think it is. It is really rough for those inmates. The other day we shook my truck down. A month ago, I found two knives on my back seat. A shank and a knife. He would got the, the narcotics raid out truck a month ago. I found Mojo on dealer's truck. Somebody had brought it out here overnight, stuck it in the lawnmower. The guy got on the lawnmower. They got synthetic the marijuana is what it is. It's synthetic marijuana. They smoke and they get high. We pick them up in the morning. They vomit at the mouth. They're already high. They're a liability to the city. We got to watch them go out high. Well, I could go on and on. But I suggest Bud that he talk about hiring some part-time people. I'm retiring in May, but I'm coming back part-time. Hiring part-time people to cut the grass. Because I do the highway. It's a whole different thing than doing the riverfront. You got cars and all kind of stuff out there. But the, the inmate thing is just part over with. We used to have five, we may have one, we may have two, we may not have none now. And November's gonna get even worse. So y'all gotta think about hiring some people for this stuff. And most of the summer, this whole summer, uh, we have five inmate crews, and we, most crews had one, maybe two inmates the whole summer. And we went for probably a month where two inmate crews didn't have any, we couldn't get anybody because it was just a, a, a problem with the facility getting the guys, they have to go through a 10 step process to get over to get out. And it takes a while to do that. So it's just, a, it's just like Cedric say, it's not as easy as everybody thinks. You just go up there and get some guys and start cutting the grass. So we need another, to have thing, people. another thing they'll tell you is they're, they're, they have no loyalty to that equipment. <laughs> no. and, and, and see, we got to hire people that's going to be accountable for cutting bread. You can hold me accountable, but I got five inmates that can care less. All they want to do is get out here and get able to get what they need to get. They can care less. They'll tell me, say, Mr. Moore, I ain't doing nothing. I can't do nothing. I can't make them do nothing. Yeah. But take them back in and give me another one. Maybe he'll work. It may be won't. It's all. And then yeah, the old, the old days of, of the chain gangs and the working in the dead, that's so weird. That's, They're that's not going to lock them up. They're not going to punish them or nothing. I take them back and fire one. The next day, he'd be on the clerk there. That's how it works. Bill, did you have a comment? I did. Um, recreational park in particular, they used to bid it out. It was usually about 10000 a year in the whole park. Now we're paying 250000 all a year and benefits for people to cut the grass. Um, so I think if you bid all this out, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of people who cut the grass professionally, and they'd be really competitive. And well, we wouldn't have the added expense of employees and benefits. And turn the recreational district back to the recreational district and let them volunteer like we used to. We, what we have to do is identify those areas. <laughs> we have to identify those areas being cut let them come in and say you what do the river front is one the red park is another let them handle that okay anyway, that was discussion we will we will uh move forward and start working on that i just want that was just for information so uh also, anyway, good discussion. yeah thank you I can't no idea. Not only that, when they get there and they get there on the motor, one of them has to go to the bathroom. You gotta load them up and gotta load them all up. You gotta load them all up. So the back there and say, you know, I got to go But thank you, Seth. We appreciate that. Appreciate it. All right, number uh, number twelve. Uh, Board approval resolution to adopt the parish hazard mitigation plan for 2017. What that is, is, you know, FEMA and all those uh, government organizations, for you to receive monies and payments and reimbursements, like for example, when we do the fight the flood or spending money on that, you have to you have to have adopted a, a hazard mitigation plan and have it approved. And that's basically what we're doing. As a municipality, we don't have our own individual 
plan. So we are at basically, we are adopting the, the parish plan or our mitigation plan and that enables us to receive any kind of reimbursements on our funds by adopting this at the parish of God. So that's basically what it is, is I need a resolution for us to adopt this mitigation plan for the city of Madeira. If there's any other questions on that, I'll be glad to take those at this time. Motion made by Alderman Betts that we adopt it. There second. Second by Alderman Probe. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. <clears throat> Number 13, discuss door to door sales with the city limits. I think everybody's recently had the guys coming around selling security systems and you throwing names to everybody. And uh, I think that's something that Alderman Betts has got some good ideas on that I think we should consider. Uh, I'm John, <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to let you talk. When the city council meets in ordinances, the last ordinances, 555, um, that was passed in uh, June of 1987, when the state got out of the occupational license business and then gave the uh, municipalities and the police juries uh, the opportunity to collect uh, <coughs> occupational license from businesses and itinerant vendors. In that, in that section under peddlers, um, we in the city of Bedelia, we do have <coughs> the peddlers are allowed, itinerant vendors are allowed. The other ordinance to that is referred to, if you look up on the Union Code, is, a, is an ordinance 413, which specifically uh, addressed door to door solicitations, which outlawed it, uh, basically. Well, I'm under the impression by reading uh, what the ordinance says when they adopted it in 1987 that that ordinance was uh, repealed uh, by the adoption of the new ordinance. With that being said, under um, the peddler's license, it just is very vague. It just says you got to you have to have a license uh, cost you a hundred dollars. Well, under that section, I'd like for us to amend our ordinance for peddlers with some restrictions. I would like for us to uh, restrict door-to-door -door solicitations to a certain time of day, so many days. Uh, you know, whether it's Monday through Friday, whatever. Uh, the problem that we have uh, now in some of these uh, things, they come on Saturdays and Sundays when, no, when I think nobody's looking. Um, and so um, I think that we need, under that section three with peddlers, we need to put some regulations in it. So I'm asking that we develop some regulations for uh, the itinerant solicitors uh, and uh, adopt that uh, as part of our, our ordinance, which would require uh, limits, uh, time limits. It also is um, limited to an individual salesman, meaning a company just can't buy it. Uh, a one-time license and he's got three guys that come out there. Each individual salesman is licensed and the, we have his, uh, right now we get his driver's license uh, and uh, identify, uh, identification which is put on that license uh, when, uh, and if our policeman uh, called and somebody turned it in, shows his license. Well, if that's not the person on that license, then he he has to quit. He has to go or he has to seek to get his own license before he can do it. So uh, I just think we need to put some regulations in, into that. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I don't like door-to-door -door solicitations. I hate it when they knock on my door asking for something. Uh, I mean, I don't mind kids asking for chocolate every once in a while, and school sales, but I really don't like door-to-door -door sales. But, uh, we can't stop it, but we can regulate it. Um, there are some court cases that um, said that you can uh, you can regulate them, but not to the point where they can't do business. But I think we need to uh, put some regulations into uh, the ordinance concerning itinerant centers. You brought up a good point about like 
children to set them up. How is that going to affect them? Well, like I said, it's Be the same thing basically. It's basically it's the same thing. So if my son wants to sell cookie dough for the school now he's got to come to City Hall with license. Well well I'm saying that it's a if you're going to, if you're going to take anything to an extreme uh, you, you can do that. But primarily this is this is designed for those who whose business would seek like security systems. Uh, cell phone. Remember that day I called? They, they, yeah. yeah. They were camped out what, down there. One, one of the things, and I, I and I think that's a good point, you, you know, where do you draw the line at? And I, and I, I for one, agree with Sabrina. I think our kids, you know, raising and having fun raising, showing them some responsibility, I think that is something that shouldn't be included in it. However, I think it's a safety issue. I know my dad has, well, opened, but he's, he's so kind hearted, no matter what they're selling, he's going to let them in the door. They're getting in the door and they're going to, you know, they're going to do their sale job on him. And it's just, it's just a shame. I mean, I even had a guy, I was having here recently, the, the, the security guy, security system guy was real pushy with me. I had family there. Uh, he said, well, they ain't going to take but 20 minutes. I said, I ain't got two minutes. They ain't got one minute. I, I got family here. We've eaten and, you know, well, I've got all the, you know, he just said, really. But I feel like if we had somebody like that, we could notify the police department. We could also put them on our web website so the people can go and, and look, go on Facebook, go and see, and put them on our Facebook post. People who are have received their permit, and if y'all pull them up, they're not on there, don't talk to them. But if it is legal to do, and they've gone through the necessary permit, and I agree with John, we need to have restrictions to where we can protect you in the event of somebody coming by selling something that's gonna sell you a bill of goods. And I just think that's a safety feature for our, our town, especially our elderly people who aren't able to maybe talk themselves out of a, a pushy person, that we can make sure that people walk around knocking on your door is somebody that's legit. And I, I think that's a good thing. I think we need to explore that. And I mean, that'll be something we can maybe have a, you know, work through as, as committee, a committee of the Alderman to come up with some restrictions. Are y'all good with like that? Like that or the yeah, and again, I think we should. Be part of I think. Put in place. I think even though that I think, and maybe to take it a step further, if there is a fundraiser that the school is doing, still go through the same process to get approval, and we'll have them on Facebook. You might, they might not get the kid to come by, but you might want to call and say, "Hey, look, y'all seen your child by? I want to give them. I might help them rather than be a deterrent." So, it's, it's we're talking about all these things. I think I'd like to do a committee of. of couple of them that want to do that we'd be glad to sit down and work out some restrictions so if you all want to volunteer for that just let me know and we'll we'll start on that right away okay let's go on down to number 14 we're getting close this y'all know we might this be the quickest meeting ever <laughs> <laughs> discuss the city owned property adjacent to riverside baptist church y'all know this is something we started several months ago uh, the uh, Riverside Baptist Church has reached out to us about the property uh, directly behind them. Uh, they're wanting to expand their church. I think that is a, a good viable church in that area. Uh, however, there were some things we, that we were required to get appraised. We just got the appraisal. The appraisal has come back. I feel like it's excessive. I don't feel like the property is worth what the appraisal says it is. It's less than an acre, and it's basically scrub brush. It's, it's between the church property and the property goes up to the edge of the fruit of the loom property. Uh, we have an appraisal of, of 22000 for that. And I just, we feel like that's excessive. We discussed it uh, before the meeting. I discussed it with council. Uh, and we, we talked a lot of, about a lot of different options. When you're dealing with that or if you're dealing with town property, you still have to be very careful that we've got to follow the procedure to make sure we do the things we're supposed to do with that. So uh, some of the discussions we had was uh, just like with our other properties is that we're fixing to sell. We asked for a appraisal value. We had to keep coming back and, and amending the ordinance to how we could sell it. <coughs> I'd like to get this right the first time. So I would just be curious to see what those ideas all of them have as far as dealing with this property. And also involve council in the discussion as well. Wasn't this the property that originally we were planning to donate to them? If we could, right. We were originally planning on just donating it to right. 
the property on John Glenn, it appraised at like 3500 is that John Glenn? John Glenn. I'm Dale. sorry, John 3, Dale. 3500 Is it substantially smaller than this one? Yeah, this is just a lot on John Dale. Yeah. This is, not, this is not quite, I think it's 0.92, 92 tenths of an acre or 93 tenths of an acre. I have the appraisal here, by the way, and it's, uh, it is. Who did the appraisal? Pardon? Who did the appraisal? Uh, Ms. Wilson. Uh, Can you get her the appraisal? Well, you know, one of the things that, now let, I will say this, I will say this, a lot of times, anytime you, you have an appraisal or just being in the banking business years ago, you had to do comparables. And if you didn't have a good comparable, you had to reach outside that area and go find comparables. And so it's not really, you know, it's not a good comparison. It's really not. But you still have to sum up that appraisal to your comparables based on a uh, selling price, a, a best use price, and a bunch of different factors that probably brought that up. But, you know, I, I really feel like that's, that's excessive. And I, I, I guess I'm asking for direction from the my question is this, okay, you throw it out there, $22,000, do you have to bid it? I mean, would you have to get that legal? No, there's no you have to put that out there? There's no requirement that you sell it at the appraised value. You're right, okay. And, you know, the board has the, the authority to... But anybody would have the option to bid it out, right, is what you're saying. Not just, not just them. He's to. asking, do we have to put this up for bids, or can we make an offer? Like, can we set a price to sell right. it for? Uh, I don't think you that have to charge. get everything. You don't have. To. Yeah. Can we sell it for a dollar? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got dollar leases for 99 years. I just thought <laughs> perhaps we could sell it. Makes sense. It sounds yeah. like we could do that. <laughs> but going back to that, the, when you go land, you have to get an appraisal. That's you know, that's part of it. But it doesn't require that it sell for the appraised value. Right. And, and the board has the authority to take their experience into account, talk to people, get some documentation about what people in the field think about values, and then make a judge, judgment and you know, decide what you want to sell it for. So you said, you said no to my joke about the dollar. Well, Is there a minimum? No, that, well, here we go with reasonable. Okay. You know. Can I ask a question? Is what about a long term, long term lease for a real low figure? Is that a viable option? Yeah, Once again, the dollar would, would kill that because that's, that's not a reasonable amount of money. And you don't want to treat special. I mean, if somebody else really wanted that piece of property, they were willing to pay $22,000 for it. Like they ought to be able to get that piece of property for $22,000. I mean, yeah. I mean, you have to have it, but that's no different than when First now Baptist we're back up. Vance had their property across the street from First Baptist, and we had to pay a prime price. But if the board wants to get top dollar for it, then certainly you can try. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I would like to, I'd like to know that we got what we should get for it and not to stay special to the church because it is what they want. You see what I'm saying? No, what I said was that the board can look at the appraisal. Right. And they can independently decide, I don't think that appraisal is correct. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean, I don't know. And, and they can use their knowledge of land transactions. They can talk to friends. They can get somebody to do things and decide that a fair value is right. whatever. I have a question, James, you have a question? Have any of y'all been talking about this for a few months now? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if anybody else did for it. Well, I didn't know. Was. That's the only person who really got a value. Me, for it. honestly, when I looked at it, I thought it would be worth like $2,500 to $3,000. That's what I mean, that's what I was thinking. I, mean, I said less than $5,000. Yeah. So, you know, right. <laughs> Well, this is, has anyone from the church, represent the church, made an offer of any kind? No, this started out with uh, Pastor um, William Harrell reached out to me and I went several months ago and went and looked at it. And really, I, I told him, I said, Glenn, I'll be honest with you, this, I don't see this is not any use to the town. I said, you know, we'll start the process and see what we have to do. And if, I'm sorry it's taking so long to do that, but, you know, <laughs> Seems like nothing moves fast when you deal with doing things like this. 
But I said, look, I, to be honest with you, I hope that we could give it to y'all something like that because the town is just a liability for us sitting there. It's growing up. It's just scrub brush. It's got a ditch in the middle of it, like you said. It just, but for what they want to do to reach and be a, 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 a plus for that little community there around Wallace Circle, I think it would be a plus for them to have that because they do have a good ministry there for our town and our community. And I, whatever we can do to make that <coughs> as easy on them as we can. I want to try to do that. So uh, that's my that's my stance. The biggest thing is, is there's no access, is there, Jane? I mean, nobody else can access it, really. And they can try to go legally and try to well, get access. Unless, I, I mean, it, to correct you, unless they ac accept, accessed it from the sides in the back right. off of right. Right. existing town property. Right. And there's a fence all the way around that. Yeah. yeah. Um, how many of y'all feel like it's worth $22,000 on the board? Negative. I don't think so. I don't. I'm thinking 10% of that is pretty good. Might be. What, 10% of that? 10% mm -hmm. of well, what she said. I'll ask, I'll ask council, council, what, what, what do you, in your opinion, to, is this something that we just need to maybe come up with a price here tonight and maybe see if it will pass the muster of uh, any kind of, That's not big. Council said that. Right. Council said I don't have to. I didn't hear that. Council yeah, I don't, no, I don't think you have to advertise everything for bids. Okay. There's some big, big ticket items you do, but not everything. I didn't hear you. Well, my, I said big ticket items, you got to advertise those things to make sure you get big them. ticket bids. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> $77. <laughs> yeah. You got $77. Man, I think actually, that, you know, if, if, if you could. Get a committee or something to, to sit down because I believe you need to document why you think the bid's not right and, and what you've done to investigate values and things on your own. And then you can come back and, and kind of make an offer to them what you wanted to sell it to them for. Does that sound satisfactory to you? Yeah. Absolutely. I just don't want some. I guess in the sense of mine is I don't want to put it out there. Somebody buy it and then they turn around and tell them we're gonna sell it to you for twenty two thousand dollars. Is that what it worth? Yeah, you know what I mean. That's my worry. And, I mean, I and somebody I might do that. Have to worry about that because we can <laughs> we can just I think we can by committee set a price and then say this is what we'll take for it. And if the church chooses to accept it, then the church has it. If not, we still own it. No harm, no foul. Right. Um, is that correct, council? Why? <laughs> Because it's the well, board that has the decision. I'll buy it for five hundred dollars and give it to them. Pardon? Oh, I'll buy it for five hundred dollars and give it to them. Hey, I'm with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I get a twenty-two thousand dollar write-off. Smart thinking. Smart thinking. Good coming, but uh, so what I'm here, we'll we'll again. I like the, what he said. Make a committee that. Looks at it, just look at it. Come up with what we think. Maybe bring it up next week. Okay. And we'll have we'll put that and make sure we have that on the agenda and make sure we do our due diligence on what we can legally do and feel like comfortable that we can do. And James, if you'll relay that to Pastor Harold, we'll appreciate it. I will. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Okay, move on number 15, discussion of public auction city on properties. And just just the information, the date of that is going to auction is October 17th. October 17th would be auction be here. Be here at noon. That's on be here at noon. So if you're interested in buying one of these properties, please show up and we will hook you up. Okay. <laughs> we'll get you lined up. Okay. That was just for information. Number 16. Uh, I need, I'm, I'm, we have one position that's short on the uh, Board of Adjustment and we need to fill this to get our, our Board of Adjustment in full compliance with, uh, with, the, uh, with the law. And tonight I'd like to appoint, and with approval of the board, I'd like to appoint David Knapp to uh, be in that position, to fill that fifth person for the board of adjustment. So I would like to ask the council if they would, if they have any questions of me about this appointment, I'll be glad to take those now. Any questions? 
Can I hear a motion we accept that appointment? Make a motion. Motion made by Arnold Proach. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Arnold Dess. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Now, thank you all for coming tonight. We appreciate it. Do I hear a motion? Make that motion. Motion made. Thank you. The quickest meeting ever. Wow. <laughs>